uh, I started out, I thought that I had almost all of the uh, the first patch and first flaps for the eight lodges that made up currently the Twin Rivers Council I'm going back to 1925. And I discovered mm -hmm. that some of them are not first and some that I don't have. Um, mm -hmm. I was, uh, hopefully some folks would be able to answer some questions. So I'm starting out with what I know of as maybe the first uh, patch that was issued don't know who issued it, uh, but it was the fellowship meeting in 1949 for the Uncle Sam Council, which is Troy, Saratoga County Council, Schenectady County Council, and the uh, Fort Orange Council, which is Albany. This is the one that we've got an actual date to be able to, to work off of. Uh, which lodge actually issued this? Uh, don't know. And this may be the start of the conclaves for uh, the New York area. I'm doing these in, in number order. I figured that would be the easiest thing to be able to do. The The first lodge that uh, we have in our area is the Schenectady County Council, originally called Buffalo Lodge, Lodge number 19. Within about four or five years, they changed from Buffalo to Sicilia, and Sicilia, as I understand it, uh, means Buffalo. Unfortunately, none of these, the, the lodges, kept records, so we don't know when these patches were issued or the number that were issued. The round is the first Sicilia round, and they did a uh, reproduction of it a number of years later as an anniversary piece. If you look at it carefully, you can see the, there's a distinction. This is a bigger patch than the, the reproduction. The reproduction is also brighter, and you have to look at where the arrow points to be able to do the distinguishing feature. Underneath it is the first flap that was issued, and these were fully embroidered patches, very, very dark, as you can see. This one has, except for the buffalo, there's no real way to identify it. The later two uh, also uh, fully embroidered patches have Schenectady on the patch. The next lodge mm, that uh, was created in the area never had a patch and uh, died out. It was lodge number 27, and the lodge name was Mohawks. Mm, and eventually, mm, from the records that I've seen, it merged into uh, one of the later lodges that we will uh, have. But there's no records of any sort for that one. Um, and then the third lodge that's created is Wakpomany Lodge, Mohican Council, 1930. And uh, I believe this is either at the very very end of the 40s or the very early 50s, they produced two felt arrowheads and then uh, a single twill arrowhead that kept on getting uh, redone, but they don't issue variants on that one. And so this is the the, the first patch for Wakpomany. And there's a slight feature, which I like, can't really point it out that well on this. But the way to be able to tell these uh, patches for many of the reproductions, if you take a look at the tail right above the spine, you can see a very distinct feature that no reproduction has ever been able to re reproduce. And so if you don't find that very unique piece that's there, uh, it's not a real patch. The one under that is the first flap, and that was probably to the towards the end of the 50s. I came into the lodge in 1960, and they were just selling the last of those patches to the new members in 1960. It doesn't really show on this, but if you have an actual patch, it is larger than the pocket, overlapping it on the sides. Uh, the next flap that they issued, they tried to do it, uh, fix it up, but it came down below the edge of the pocket. And finally, the third version of this actually fit onto the pocket. This is Mahican, um, which was the Fort Orange Council. And we do have a date for that moose uh, because Mahican is the only lodge that at some point in the 60s, they actually decided to go back and write a history of the lodge. And they indicate in 1941 that they approved a neckerchief. The description in the history does not match this, but they do say that what they were using was the leather moose head, which was the approved patch. Uh, this lodge was founded in 1940. The history does not indicate when they adopted the moose, but since they're talking about the moose head and a neckerchief in 1941, it probably was something that was uh, approved right at the very beginning of the history of the lodge. So technically, this moose head that you're seeing that's glued on to the neckerchief, and you can see the glue stains that are on that, which I do not have. Uh, somebody has this offered for sale for just under $7,000 on eBay. Uh, we felt that was a little bit too much. None of the people around here have ever seen um, one of these moose heads. They've simply heard about them. So then 
what Mohican did was they introduced an arrowhead patch. And again, this one's, I've got a better one, but I uh, couldn't uh, immediately get a copy of it. So you can see the glue stains on this, but this is actually the first patch that was introduced in this somewhat modern times. So we don't know when that was done. And under that is the first flap that they did. Again, these colors don't really show up that much from the way it is. You have to really hold it in your hand. The next lodge is Mohawk, and that was the Uncle Sam Council. And that came in during the war years. And they issued two rounds. You can see what I believe is the first one. And I'm, again, we don't have very many of these to be able to look at, so can't compare things. Using the blue book, it says that the feathers connected to the headband, which that appears to be for this one, but it says no eyebrow. And so I was trying to figure out if that's just supposed to be the Indian's eye or there's a, an act. I don't have a copy of the other one to be able to do a comparison for that. When they went to the flap, their first flap is called the red lips flap. And I'm caught shade blind, so I don't see it that clearly. But other people tell me very definitely that the lips on the Indian for this uh, are red. For There's two other flaps and there's another odd shaped uh, patches that Mohawk produced. The next lodge is the Saratoga County Council, which was formed in the same year that Mohawk was, and they produced their first patch was a chenille. I cannot find my copy of this. I've got one. They issued a reproduction on the 25th anniversary, and you can tell the reproduction because it has the dates on it, uh, 1949 to 1974. The first flaps that I can see, the flaps seem to be almost the same, so it's fairly difficult to be able to tell, at least with my understanding as to which is the first flap. This is the best I've been able to do. The Indian looks uh, like he's very unhappy about something and he stays unhappy for a number of flaps. And then uh, we go up, this again is one that I do not have, to Adirondack Council Loon Lodge, which uh, is formed uh, in, I believe, 1947. Uh, and they're uh, celebrating an anniversary uh, this year. And the, this patch is a duck, uh, again, from the description that uh, the Blue Book has and some other pictures that I've seen. This appears to be the, the first flap. They produced a, another flap, the F3, that is almost the same as that, a little bit different on uh, the embroidery uh, for the loom. And uh, there is a, a patch in between there that uh, is uh, called the, the broken neck duck patch. And then in going in order of the, the history of the patch, we have uh, the Sir William Johnson Council, uh, which originally in, uh, was the name Nick Stoner Lodge. And there is the one patch that the Nick Stoner Lodge produced. The difference between that and the repo, I understand, is cut edge and rolled edge um, on, on the patch. And after a few years, they discovered that Nick Stoner had the history of being a famous Indian killer. And so the lodge members decided that they did not want to continue calling themselves Nick Stoner. And so they changed the name to Thandanega. And they produced this interesting horseshoe shaped patch, um, which again, because of the, the coloration is not easy to be able to see before they produce their first flap. And their totem is the wolf. And it is a very peculiar wolf. The patch, the flaps that they produced after this, the wolf outline in the center of the patch is much more distinct. And that is the, the original eight lodges that made up the, uh, the current Catan Lodge. What I didn't do was do copies of as the lodges merged and they started to change names, even though they kept the same numbers. Um, I didn't bother to produce uh, those uh, flaps because I didn't really think that they're really first flaps because they're merged uh, lodges. And I don't have the, the uh, uh, first flap book. My understanding is that the Nick Stoner is a 10. The Sicilia was a 10. The Wakpamani was a 9. And I believe that the Loon was either an 8 or a 9. These were not easy to be able to get when I was a kid. In fact, very few people outside of the original lodge members had any of these first flaps. Flaps. So this was an attempt on my part to be able to get as many of them as I can to preserve it uh, and, and put out uh, when we have new members come in so they can see some of the history. Well, Joseph, uh, you remember this and you hadn't mentioned this, but uh, years ago, there were lodges that had restrictions. Can you give us a rundown on that group? Yeah, there, there. I mean, as far as I know, almost all of the lodges in my area had had a restriction on the thing. The when I again, I got it in 1960. I was not really a, a big patch collector in those days. The one that I knew was the heaviest restriction was loon. 
loan, it was a one per life piece. And if something happened to your patch, if it got burned up or torn up, you had to produce the remnants of the patch before they would issue you another one. Uh, while Pomony had a restriction on their patch too, but it wasn't to their members. The, when I came in, uh, th there was some comment being made that you could buy one or two uh, flaps. I think it may have been one flap. And as I said, that first flap was, was available for sale. There were very few of them and I immediately grabbed one, uh, wanting to the, that at 50 cents. Uh, now it's somewhere like between 800 to $1,000, the last I've seen, depending on the condition of the flap. Um, and I, we, fortunately, we've got four or five of them, some of them in nice, crisp mint condition. The one that's pictured is not. Uh, but a few years later, they basically dropped any type of restriction for the lodge members, but said to the lodge, the, the members, that you were not supposed to be trading that patch that was for you. You could have as many as you wanted, as many shirts as you wanted, but you didn't trade it, you didn't give it away, any of that type of thing. And then we had a conclave in the early 80s, if I'm not mistaken, on the date at uh, Camp Saratoga. And our kids left their shirts in their uh, tents when they went to go swimming in the afternoon. And we didn't have anybody staying in the tent. They came back with no uh, pockets. They had been just the, 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 the flap piece had just been torn off every single shirt that was hanging up in the, in the thing. And the adults said to the boys, is this really what you wanna be able to do? And so the lodge members said no, and they removed the restriction. Now, those are the two stories that I know about on that. I know that there were restrictions on the others, but I don't know what they were. And I don't think anything was, was as rigorous as, as the loan um, restriction, uh, which lasted for quite some time uh, before loan ended up doing things and I think Loon's restriction went well into the 90s um, my recollection out of the thing because I think the earlier earliest ones that we were able to get hold of were either anniversary flaps or their NOAC flaps um, that they had now some of you better collectors that I have uh, may know more stories than I do on, on that type of thing. But those restrictions I thought were interesting. Uh, Joe, yes, my sir. lodge at that time had about 35 or 40 people. About what size were these lodges at that time? Um, I would say that most of the lodges were somewhere between, uh, say, 150 and 250 members. Uh, when I came in in 1960, we had a class of just around 30 uh, uh, ordeals. And we did a, a single ordeal at that point. Our conclaves uh, were, were approaching 300 people for those lodges. Uh, and all of those lodges that existed were in uh, the, the section at that point. Uh, earlier years in the 50s, there were more lodges and then some others moved in and out over the years. But I would say, you know, I don't think any of the lodges is more than 250 active members.